from Am Amaltas Institute of Medical Sciences, Devas. The title for my paper presentation is Study of Endovascular Management of Pancreatitis Related Pseudoanalysis. Introduction. The vascular complications are more common in patients with chronic pancreatitis than acute pancreatitis. Arterial hemorrhages due to pseudoaneurysms are life-threatening life complications of pancreatitis. Most commonly involved vessel, according to literature, is splenic artery, followed by gastrodural artery, then pancreatic or duodenal artery. Pathogenesis of pseudoaneurysm formation. Inflammation leads to release of pancreatic autoenzymes and cytokines, which causes vessel wall weakening and erosions, ultimately leading to disruption of vessel wall and pseudoaneurysm formation. Imaging. Plain CT scan may be done to show hemorrhage, high density area and collection. CT angiography from dome of diaphragm to iliac crest should be done in all cases where there is gastrointestinal bleed, hypotension or drop in hemoglobin. Both arterial and venous phases are needed. Angiography images shows a variable size, smooth or irregular contrast fill out pouching from an artery or its branch. Management strategy, management of pseudoaneurysm, either endovascular or surgical. Among endovascular, either coil embolization or flow or stent graft or direct injection into pseudoaneurysm. Aims and objective, aim to assess the role of endovascular management of pseudoaneurysms caused as a complication of pancreatitis. Objective to assess the outcomes of endovascular management of pseudoaneurysms caused as a complication of pancreatitis. Material and method patients demographic, clinical presentation, laboratory findings, angiography findings, details of endovascular procedure, technical outcome, clinical outcome were assessed. CT angiography was performed using a 64 slice MDCT scanner of G in all cases. Angiography was performed on a digital subtraction angiography system, Optima, IGS-320. Angiography and endovascular interventions were performed through a right common femoral arterial approach or brachial artery approach. The celiac artery, superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery were catheterized using 5 French diagnostic catheter and selective angiography performed. Super selective catheterization of the common hepatic artery, gastrodural artery, left gastric artery and splenic artery were performed by 2.8 French microcatheter. Angiography images were reviewed for the presence of pseudoaneurysm, contrast extravasation and vessel wall irregularity. The vascular abnormalities were treated either by embolization or by stent graft placement. Embolization was performed with coils of varying size or N-butyl cyanoacrylate glue. Angiography was repeated at the end of the procedure in all cases. Study center, a tertiary care center, Amaltas Institute of Medical Sciences at Radio Diagnosis Department. Study design, retrospect, retrospective study, duration of study, 5 years, sample size 30. Patient selection inclusion criteria. All patients who underwent endovascular management for pseudoaneurysm related to pancreatitis. Exclusion criteria. Patients who underwent surgical management for pseudoaneurysm related to pancreatitis. Results. 13 patients with a mean age of 45 years were included in this study. Splenic artery. 38.48% was the most commonly involved vessel. Gastroduodenal, superior mesenteric, left gastric and pancreatico duodenal arteries were less commonly involved vessel. Embolization was performed using glue and that is N-butyl cyanoacrylate in 7 patients. Coils in 3 patients, both coil and glue in 1 patient. Stent graft placement in 1 patient, direct glue injection in 1 patient. Technical success was achieved in 100% that is 13 patients and clinical success in 92% that is 12 patients. One patient had post of complication that, it, that, it, that is rebreeding. Demographics. Total number of patients were 13. Male is to female ratio was 7 is to 1. Mean age of patients was 45 years. Uh, three patients were of acute pancreatitis, whereas rest were of chronic pancreatitis. Arteries involved in our studies are summarized as follows. Splenic artery was involved in 5 patients. Gastrodural artery in 3 patients. Left gastric artery in 2 patients. Splenic superior mesenteric artery in 1. Pancreatic or duodenal artery in 1. And as, as superior mesenteric artery plus splenic in 1 patient. Details of endovascular pro uh, procedure and outcomes. N-butyl cyanoacrylate glue was used in 7 patients. Uh, coils in 3 patients. Coils plus glue in 1 patient. Stent graft in 1 patient and direct glue injection in 1 patient. Technical success was achieved in 13 patients whereas clinical success was achieved in 12 patients. A 41 year old male with acute pancreatitis and hematomasis. Uh, CT uh, 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 in uh, left gastric artery pseudoaneurysm is shown as you can see which was managed with the N-butyl cyanoacrylate glue.
53 year old male with chronic pancreatitis uh, gastroduodenal artery was affected for which coiling was done Thirty-eight year old female with pancreatitis uh, having pseudo aneurysm, as you can see, which was managed with direct glue injection into pseudo aneurysm. Forty year old male with splenic artery involvement, as you can see. Which was managed with stent graft placement. Discussion and conclusion: Conventional conventional angiography has been used to evaluate pancreatitis-related vascular complications, as reported in literature. Our study two had splenic artery as the most commonly involved vessel. The less commonly involved vessels include gastroduodenal, left gastric, superior mesenteric, and pancreatic or duodenal arteries. Transarterial embolization is considered as the initial choice of treatment. Hence, we conclude that endovascular management is safe and effective and is associated with good outcomes. But careful follow-up is necessary. A high technical and clinical success with low bleeding rate, low re-bleeding rates in this study provide further support for endovascular therapy in pancreatitis-related hemorrhage. These are my references.